Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Today we have a co-adventure guide, a man who means a lot to me, uh, Doug Barry. He was an example to me when I first started getting rolling in ministry. We're going to come back and <clears throat> talk story with Doug, try to catch up with him really uh, in just a few moments. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. You know why we call it the Bear Wozniak Adventure? Because seriously, each of us is called to be on an adventure. Uh, I, I know there's a there's scene in The Hobbit, I forget what the guy's name, when, when he finally decides he's going to go off and, and, and go, out, go off on this, uh, this journey, and he says to, himself, says to himself, I wonder what kind of adventure this will be. And that's really the way we should face our life. And that's the way uh, our friend Doug Barry lives his life. And so, Doug Barry, welcome to the show. Hey, Bear, awesome to be with you, man. This is really nice to, to have spent time with you again, brother. Yeah, we just hang out together. We were starting to talk, and I said, wait a minute, let's just talk on the on the show. <laughs> just record Hey, it. tell let's us go. about, tell, I, I want to know about, first of all, about your, what's going on with you guys, because I get, I get your newsletters. And mm -hmm. BRC used to be Battle Ready something. Coalition. But now, but now the, the BRC means something else, too. What does it mean? Yeah, the BR stands for Be Ready Coalition. And, you know, a couple reasons we decided to change that. Number one is we wanted to reach a broader audience. And there are people out there that the term, you know, battle ready is just kind of hard on them. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to help as many people as possible be ready, mm -hmm. which does mean being battle ready, spiritually speaking. Mm -hmm. But we also address, you know, the spiritual, the body, and the soul. We we mm -hmm. try to bring it all together. I'm, I'm sorry, the uh, the the mind, the body, mind, and soul. Trying to bring it all together and be ready in all these different areas. So we thought let's try to broaden the audience reach by just adjusting the two words to just let's. We got to be ready. But your We've baseball hat, your baseball hat is BRC. No, That's but it. you know, yours is yours is the first men's ministry that I came in contact with when I returned to the church about twelve years ago, and somebody mm -hmm. said, "You got to see this," and it said, "It said battle ready." What's that? Oh man, the guy's lifting weight. Who's that? And I, I flew out to Nebraska back in the day when you were up there, yeah. and, we, and yeah. just to just to meet you because I need I know I know whatever path you were on. I need to I need to get in get in line, you know. So, hey, well, well, and I gotta say, Bear, that yeah. was that was a pretty amazing moment. You just con just reached out of nowhere, contacted me, and said, "Hey, my name's Bear Wozniak, and this is who I am. This is what I do. I'm, I'm, I want to come to Nebraska. I'm going to be in that area. I'd like to meet you." And you came to my house. You met my family. You hung yeah. out for a while. That's that's not a that's not a that's not a normal thing. People just don't regularly do that. So I was really impressed by that. I, well, that was just a great start of our friendship. Well, Doug Barry is the kind of guy you either are drawn to or want to run away from. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's well put. Yeah. Hey, yeah, what happens when I, what, what, let me ask you this: When you're in, in the emails that I get, it says part, push this button, participate in this. I've never gone beyond the screen. What happens when people participate in these <laughs> events that you have? What happens in those things? You know, we, we do a lot of live training webinars where we're trying to to help people just be educated, be strengthened, but also take action, okay? Mm. And the action part is something that a lot of people don't want to do. And I put a post out on my Facebook page oh, a week and a half, 10 days ago. Yeah, a couple weeks ago, maybe by now. And it simply said, hey, to all you men out there, if you want to sit around, go ahead. I said, go ahead and sit around smoke your pipes and your cigars and drink your whiskey and your beer and discuss the problems in the world and in the church fine but for the love of god get yourself in shape learn how to fight and be ready to protect and defend those entrusted to your care it's the other part of the equation now the comments on it were great a couple guys men were offended by the the statement it, look it's not personal i don't know who you are out there and if it bothers you, then it's something maybe to reflect on. If, if it doesn't apply to you because you're already taking care of yourself, you've already got a plan to protect spiritually and naturally, then this doesn't apply to you. You're fine. But the women, the response to the women was an astounding. Really? 
Oh, they want Aren't men. Aren't they awesome? To, yeah. Oh, yeah. They want men to be on fire. They want them to be spiritually and physically connected and ready to go. We can't keep playing these games that we're just going to pray ourselves out of all of our problems. I mean, right now, as we record this, there was a flood in Libya. All right. There was a serious rainstorm that had that had gone through that whole region. Yeah. Libya was hit. Two dams burst. They were they were they were terrible shape, cracking. They were breaking down. And the town of Derna, I believe, um, was just, just the water just rushed through. If you look at the aerial view, it literally just washed buildings and lives away. Estimated uh, cost of life, it looks like, is exceeding 20,000 potentially. Mm -hmm. Many of them washed out into the ocean. They'll never find their bodies. Now, the speed with which things can change in our lives is so quick. It was right. nighttime, and, and, the, and the dam broke in the middle of the night. So there was no warning. People are sleeping, and they're washed away. Now I say this for this very reason. Now you've got tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people in the region without fresh water, without electricity, they need medical care. You can't just pray these things away. People have to get in their boots on the ground and start providing clean water, medical care, and so forth. But that's for all of us every day of our lives. We have to have an idea of being ready, Be ready. body, mind, and soul. Dude, okay, so so I wanna do something. So you know, by the way, my, my dad, I don't know if you heard about I know you know about Lahaina, what happened in Lahaina. Yes, that, that's another example of how fast things can change. That fast. You know, my dad was a deacon at the Church Maria Lenakila Catholic Church in Lahaina. Mm. Um, the one that's still standing. I don't know if you heard yeah. about this. Oh, I did. It's I saw pictures of it. Yeah, incredible. Having mass there. Uh, so we need to learn as men that we need to know that, you know, we need to know where the fortress is. You know, yeah. there's there's these different levels of battles that we fight, but uh, we need to know that the, that the, the Catholic Church it isn't a symbol of hope. That building isn't a symbol of hope. The body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ is present there in the Eucharist. That is hope itself. But I'm going to do something really unusual with you. Okay? Okay. I want to. I never have never done this before. I can't think of anybody else I could really do this with. Maybe a couple okay. of other men I know. But you know, I have this new book, Twelve Rules for Manliness, This Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Nice. I should have called it based on Doug Berry's life. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to throw out a couple chapter titles and just see where you go with it, you know. Um, okay, okay. Uh, one of the ones that, that we kind of were talking about is, we started off with is, is one of the chapter titles, you got to be lean and mean, fitness to witness. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Why does it, you know, when men join our man cave, the, one of the first things we do is we get, we get them into physical shape. What is, why is yeah. physical fitness part of this, the, the life of a, true, of a true man, of a spiritual man? It's a great quote um, from an old John Wayne movie. It's one of my favorite quotes. I, I, I quote him a lot in this book, dude. I, I used to have it hanging in my in my weight room, my garage. Um, and it basically said this. It was from Gang, where he plays Genghis Khan. I think it's called The Conqueror. It's yeah. not a great movie. It's a terrible casting decision, if you ask me, to have John Wayne play Genghis Khan. But anyway. If he's not wearing a cowboy boots, I don't like it. But go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> But there's a line in there where they're talking about bringing Genghis Khan's men into this town that they're they're about to lay siege to. And one of the village elders comes out and says, hey, come on in, relax. We'll give you the, the wine, the women, the psalm, the whole nine yards. And someone in Genghis Khan's entourage says, no, the men will stay out here. They'll sleep on the ground and they'll stay basically, as you said, lean and mean and ready to go, ready for battle. Because, and here's the quote, if they become too comfortable, they will get soft. If they get soft, they will get weak. If they get weak, they can't fight. And if they can't fight, they'll die. Now, mm. that's spiritual and natural. Right. We get too comfortable in our faith. We don't get challenged from the pulpit. We get comfortable. We get laid back. We think we just got to clock in, clock out on Sundays. You know, we just got to fill that box, take that spiritual vitamin, and we're good. No, no. Uh, you need challenge. That's disgusting. You need to be pushed. Yeah. And physically is the same thing. Now, the great thing about us is God created us body, mind, soul. So we have an intellect. We have a physical component of body, of feelings, of muscles, joints, bones, the whole nine yards. We have to have good nutrition, good exercise so that we can stay strong, coordinated, clear thinking. It affects our brain. And then the spiritual component actually improves. You can meditate right. in prayer better if you're healthier. Yeah, and you, the fitness you get rid of that brain fog. And there's, you know, like, dude, try reading. If you want to get uh, mentally fit, try try reading the Summa, you know, by, oh, by Aquinas. Oh, you know what I mean? Oh. So you, we want to have, we want yeah. to be fit in all in all of these areas. We're talking with yeah, Doug Barry because we're connected. We're connected, body, mind, soul. It all you can't divorce one part of yourself from another. 
Right. It's so it's so beautiful. The the human body is so integrated in in with our yeah. the soul. It's not like when we die, by the way, it's not like your body just decays and goes away. Eventually your body is resurrected. God loves yeah. the human body so much he gave it the dignity of becoming a man while remaining all God. We're talking with Doug Berry. How do people find you? I'm, sh- I'm sure no one needs to know, but where do they find you? BRCoalition.com. BRCoalition.com. Or go to my YouTube channel, Doug Berry, or go to my Facebook page, Doug Berry. Either way, you'll eventually get to BR Coalition, which is where all of our resources are. And, and you can sign up for some of our content and our courses and everything. If they want to contact me to come out and speak somewhere, I still travel and speak all over the place. Love to come out and fire up the troops. Yeah, fire up the troops. Yeah, uh, Doug Berry. So we're, I'm gonna, we're gonna, when we come back, I'm going to bug you more about my, I, I got to promote my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness. It's coming out really right now uh, in the next two days. So to have you nice. on the show right now is so cool. 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? You can get it at any of the bookstores, Catholic, Barnes & Noble, all those other stores. But you also can go to deepadventure.com and get it, and you can go to uh, to um, Amazon and get it. And if you do buy a book on an online service, please leave a review because when you do that, the, like for example, at Amazon, they, they promote your book more. So we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion. Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, My adventure co-host today is is Doug Berry. We want to invite you, please, to go to consider, go to uh, deepadventure.com. The mama bears out there, become a member because when you do, you you get you get ammunition uh, for your own spiritual life. We have a whole one year curriculum for you uh, with audio, video, and other things on the virtues. And then, men, join the join the man cave. Become a member of the man cave, and you become part of our non Facebook community. We have monthly Zoom meetups and. And we have the two-and-a-half-year curriculum on the School of Manliness, which is great for fathers to lead their sons through, and you go through that curriculum with us. So, And, and my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, is, is out right now. So uh, we have with us today Doug Berry, uh, who um, his, his, his Be, Be Ready Coalition yeah. um, uh, is, is, is uh, something that you can participate in. And what's the website? BRCoalition.com. BRCoalition.com. So I'm, dugging, I'm bugging Doug because I have a new book. I probably should have based it on his life. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask him questions uh, <laughs> so that next time I can write the book better. Um, <laughs> let me ask you this question. What about this? 
what I have a, a chapter titled here is bridle your passions hmm. let good things run wild yeah uh, yeah. t- talking about all the areas of the appetites of man and how they 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 yield to them instead of instead of bridle them talk to them just let let us let loose on that am, am i clear enough in describing oh, yeah. yeah yeah okay. there there's a let great loose, quote that, there's a great quote from the book of sirach very similar to that that simply states master your passions or they will master you you know the idea of bridling your passions anybody can visually see you put that bridle on the horse you've got to control it then you can ride that and it can take you great places mm. passions are amazing feelings emotions passions god created us with them i like to say that feelings emotions passions they're there to help us truly live life and not just exist in wow, this world that's so cool yeah because we could just be intellectual you know, uh, machines and just only dissect this and, and and analyze this and sit around and talk about this and that. But feelings, when a child is born, when you mm. get married, when you lose a loved one, from great sadness to great joy and everything in between, the excitement of, of uh, uh, you know, of, of going on a vacation with your loved ones is just, just, just soaking up that moment of joy with a family, family get together, um, you know, the baptism of a child, you name it. Those emotional moments help us really feel and live live however if they guide us if that what if if, if, the, if that piece of our lives the passions emotions feelings if that's what's leading us and driving us it will get us in trouble mm. because we can get so excited so so thrilled about things that we can forget the rules we can get so sad and down in grief and sadness that we can we can forget truth and, and, and mm. reason. And so the intellect has got to be that guiding line right through the middle as mm-hmm. emotions go up and down, mm. feelings and passions go up and down. But when feelings and passions and appetites are put in the right place, oh, can we really embrace and enjoy amazing moments in life? And I'm not talking about things like s- skydiving and hang gliding. That's not even what I mean. I mean, when you're on a walk with a loved one, someone's mm. 80, 90 years old, they could simply walk down the street with your husband and your wife. Or recently, me and my wife took uh, took our grandkids just down the street to the cul-de-sac and back. And that fun moment of just watching them ride their bikes at three and four years old and, and the little almost two-year-old was in the little wagon I'm pulling, that joy to be with my grandkids right there in that moment was something that I could really embrace so much more fully because I can master those passions and appreciate it that much more. But yeah, I master your passions or they will master you. We know that feelings and emotions can really kick our butt if we're not careful. And so intellect and deep prayer have got to be the Mm, overriding, you know, balance checks, if you will, of those passions so that those passions can be put in the right place. And then, man, we can really we can really live. Then we can let good things run wild. So I I made a big mistake when I wrote this book, 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? I should have interviewed you first, dude. (laughs) But then I would have just kept no, saying, as you, Doug you, Berry it, said, as Doug Berry said. Uh, but Barry, you you've been through this a l- <laughs> long time. You got all this. You know what you're talking what you're but talking you, about. You know, talk to talk to them. You know, one of the pa- you know the passion, for example. Um, well, G.K. Chesterton used to say that the the f- four cardinal virtues are the ones that are restraint, like justice, self mastery, prudence, fortitude. But the theological virtues of faith, hope, and love, you can let those run wild. Mm-hmm. Um, but so many problems that men get themselves into is when they pursue a true good, but they overemphasize it. Now, you can never pursue God too much or love too much or hope too much, faith, hope, and love. But, you know, let, let, I want to just, let's just talk about it plain and simple. Pornography and lust. What do you say to men about bridling that? You know, the, in, in the right context, in, in the nuptial union, it can be beautiful. But yeah. outside of that, it can be so destructive in so many ways. How do the men r- bridle that, you know, l- l- you know, bridle that passion so that, so that uh, you know the that horse, you know when I when I was young I read the book Man of War, mm-hmm. and I thought that uh, that when they, who, he was a great racehorse I thought man, how hard is it to be a jockey? Just hold on and 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 yell at him and hit him and he'll let him run as hard <laughs> as he can, you know. Yeah. And I found out oh they had to hold that he had they had to hold him back. There are times when they released him when they, he sped up or when they, he would guide him different directions. Talk to us about that in the area of this this beautiful gift of our sexuality, yeah. and how do we how do we handle that as men? You know, it, it is one of those pieces of of our lives of of mankind of existence, of civilization that is it is one of the most innate pieces of who we are, and that is the the drive and the desire, sexual, you know, um, uh, interaction, if you will, you know, the draw of of being attracted to the opposite sex. 
Um, and just like food, you, you've got to control the food issue or you're going to get carried away. Mm -hmm. And the food you put in your mouth, eventually you just look at it, you know, your mouth is something you just feed it, whatever, a dumping ground for anything that tastes good. Oh. You know, you know, little Debbie cakes and Twinkies and ice cream and beer and, and soft drinks and everything. And you're not looking at the nutrition that goes with it. Okay, you're going to put something in in that mouth to eat because you need sustenance. You got to fill your stomach with food of some sort. What you put in makes you healthy or it makes you weak and sick. And you're investing in your future of either your future health or your future sickness by what you eat, your nutrition. Same concept here. It is so innate for us to be so driven to be attracted and to want to express sexual interaction. All right. However, if it's if it's if it's dangerous food that we're putting in and expressing the pornographic approach, the lack of dignity, the tearing down, the objectification, that just contributes to a disease, if you will, of the mind, the heart, and the soul. Mm. It can actually lead to the disease of the body if you're not careful yeah. with who you're familiarizing yourself with in this world. But the point I'm getting at is mastering what your appetite is there and understanding it for what it is, is essential. Men have sometimes asked, well, how do I battle lust? And my answer to that is every day. Every day in some way, shape, or form, whether you're doing it by laying down suppressive fire with prayer and visits to adoration, you know, and, and guarding your, your home front there by what you're watching and, and where you place your computer and your monitors and these sorts of things in relation to your home and such, so that you don't find yourself off in a dark corner at the wrong time when you're down, depressed, angry, upset, and now you can tap into this, this nasty world. And so every day you've got to fight this. Every day you've got to master that passion. You've got to bridle that passion um, because it can sneak up on you fast. It's very much like food. Every day you're going to be hungry to eat something. Every day there's going to be that drive to be attracted to someone else. So, so master the passion. Understand it for what it is, though. Let me just say this, too. Understand it for what it is. It can be one of the most devastatingly destructive things out there because of what it can lead us to do and how it can wreck relationships and it can wreck your body with diseases and so forth and addiction. Or it can be one of the most unbelievable mystical moments when you're with your spouse and you're sharing in that intimacy the way God has designed that intimacy to be shared and you know that you're doing it in the order of God's design. God's and order, because yeah. it is such a unifying act with another individual, it becomes something that is off the charts, unbelievably beautiful. So it is a powerful piece of our mankind, of our, of our of, of civilization that God gives us. You battle it every day. You know the truth of what it is. And don't kick yourself, guys, or men or women out there. If you, you find yourself attracted to others, that, look, there's, it's not as if we're not going to be attracted. We just have to know where we can and cannot act on these things, either in the mind or in the behavior. You know, it, it, you, you see a beautiful, a beautiful woman walking down the street. You acknowledge that God made a beautiful woman. And you recognize it. And then don't kick yourself for, for being and leave it attracted there. to her beauty. Yeah. You know, it's it's in the same with the lady who sees a handsome man or, or an appealing man in some way. Wow. Um, understand the depth of what God is designing for love to be and appreciation of beauty and dignity to be and then master that. And, it, you know, and the, it can be a beautiful thing. I had an interesting thought, too, uh, is that there's so, they, they say there's an increase in sexless marriage now. Mm. And what it is, people are having sex. Yeah. They're, 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 they're watching pornography and things like that. Yeah. But they're not having the intimacy in the marriage. But if, if someone is allowing themselves to pursue that, it's going to destroy your intimacy your, with your wife. So, men, you've got to win that battle. And I like what you said. You got to, what did you say? You got to lay down suppressing fire. Suppressing fire. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 you, you, and that you do that by prayer and you do that by, uh, by, by um, disciplining your mind. But I yeah. think the, the greatest, the greatest, the big, one of the greatest things you can do is just spend time with God because you don't want to mess right. up that relationship either. We're right. talking with Doug Berry. we got to take a break. Uh, BRCoalition.com, Battle Ready Coalition, Be Ready Coalition. Doug Berry, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Daryl Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up, Loner. Once upon a time, there was a cowpoke named Loner. Loner wanted to be a lawman, wrangle his way to get deputized as a posse member. Strange bird he was, 
criticized the posse regular like saying because the fellow posse member offended him and the sheriff disappointed him that he wasn't going to ride with the posse no more nor take direction from the under sheriff he chortled i can hunt down bad guys on my own adding don't need no guldern posse in spite of what it says in that old tattered posse manual well loner was eventually bushwhacked and killed by scarface joe that's what happens when you ride alone facing evil Loners like folks who say they don't need the church to be a Christian, in spite of what the Lord Marshal says and in spite of what the Lord's Manual says. Fact is, two-thirds of the Lord's Manual, the New Testament, lacks context apart from Christians participating as a member of a local church. It was that tough old sodbuster, the Apostle Paul, who wrote to the Corinthians that a Christian saying, can't say in truth he doesn't need the church said it's like an eye saying it doesn't need the hand. Sure, there's going to be some daggum hard things to follow in the manual. The sheriff can be mystifying at times, and yes, there's always a posse member that will offend us. Truth is, you'll not be effective in defeating evil apart from the posse and reading the manual. You'll get taken out by someone far wilier than Scarface Joe. So, ride with the posse. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos, Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps. Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our guest today is Doug Barry. I want to let everybody know, hey, our TV series, Long Ride Home, we've just released season four, 11 episodes, all filmed in Hawaii. It's something that the whole family can watch, of course, because it's on EWTN. Or you can go to Prime Video and watch it. Or you can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and become a member. And you get access to the secret YouTube, uh, uh, the YouTube versions of it. So you can share that, you know, with your great way for you to evangelize. Yeah. Uh, I'd sure like to be part of that that TV show sometime. You, you're there. on it. You're in it. Oh, I'm, oh yeah. Dude. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm you just know, kidding. Yeah. yeah, I forgot to mention it. Dude, we're so proud of this guy, man. We, we're out in Hawaii. No, your episode is so good. Um, there's two two segments that we do. We do uh, where you and me and Jason Jones and that young man are standing by Diamond Head. We're talking. But I got to tell everybody this thing. Doug Barry is a good surfer. I mean, he's he. Uh, <laughs> the guys that we went out, we, it was your first time surfing in Waikiki Beach. You were as good as anybody I've ever taught how to surf. Just a, just a natural. You know, I was concerned for him. I was concerned that he wouldn't go home, that he'd just become a beach bum and just surf all the time. But you were a really good surfer. I mean, we had everybody there. You know, like everyone who saw you. I've never seen a guy just. Well, you're surf you're, like you're that. a great teacher, and when yes, you yelled at me, now get up, get on the board. Like well, that, yeah, up. yeah. There's a drill sergeant element to teaching surfing. It's not like <laughs> in basketball you can say, now look, or in martial arts. Okay, now so look. 
you hold your hand like this. No, not like that. Hold it like this. Okay, now, you know, like <laughs> the, the guy's up on the board. There's a 20 second ride, and you got seconds to get it all right. So we all become yeah. drill sergeants out there. Now, did you did you get the drone shot of me with my arms yes, out dude. looking at the camera? No, dude, we got <laughs> while we I'm got, on the board. <laughs> yeah, we we mostly focused on your wipeout, but I don't even think you had a wipeout. You <laughs> no, got back down in the board. Of, no, I don't. Care. I did. Yeah. No, I, we 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 protected your dignity, but so we you know no, you did such a great job. So yeah, that season yeah. is just just out now so and it's a fun, fun it's fun too we have a little character in there in this season called a howly to the max it's a guy that comes to hawaii and reads a book how to be a pro surfer in one easy lesson and so we have a lot of fun so even the children will look forward at the end of most episodes yeah. we have a little howly to the max get to that's good. okay so my that's new book good. 12 rules for manliness where have all the cowboys gone what's another area okay i'll ask you this well, the very first thing i start out with is a man's got to have a creed and a code he can live by so creed would be that one or two word what what is it I really stand for, and then the code is all these rules that you and I've been talking about. How would Doug Barry des- describe, you know, down what would be what what is it that you live? What is what would be a creed statement? The kind of creed statement that you would live by or you would encourage others to live by. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, I can. I've got several come to my mind. Uh, before I throw it out, I would I would say this that having that code though the importance of it to me. Uh, as you just said, is is man needs purpose, and that's in Scripture in the Old Testament. A man who has no purpose is, you know, no direction, no purpose is is basically aimlessly lost. And a lot of men today mm. are are just floating in this world mm. of you know uh, social media, electronics, whether it's video games or get rich quick schemes, or or no one wants to commit, as you mentioned, you know, relationships, lack of intimacy, marriage rates are down. Uh, now with the invention of AI growing in popularity over years, they're talking about AI relationships. So it's going to be easier to have the relationship with an AI avatar type character. Uh, they'll never argue with you, of course. And then they talk of AI being involved in some sort of of uh, uh, you know, personal assistant that's going to know you so well. You can have these these lack of intimate. Th- th- there's no human connection relationships. That is part of this floating around aimlessly, no purpose, no drive, no principles, no pillars of truth to stand on mm. type of problem. And when men are there, they become easy pickings for the enemy. All right, easy pickings. There has to be a code of conduct. There has to be a uh, some sort of, like you said, a, a mantra or a mission statement that you have. You know, for me, I would say, I would sum it up in a few words that I feel absolutely driven in the work that I do to help people be better prepared. Hmm. For what? Body, mind, and soul. Be better prepared spiritually because you don't know when you're gonna die, you wanna stand before God, but while you're here, you wanna enjoy relationship with God, intimacy with God through prayer, sacraments, relationship, meditation, all that. And finding God in other people, Mm. the reality of God's presence in others and in nature, the beautiful things that God has given us. Okay, so be better prepared with God. Be better prepared mentally. Be sharp. Okay, be a great instrument in this world. Mm. All right, be a great gift to others by being better prepared. And then physically, look, you're investing in your health now and in the future. I don't, I work out, I'm 58, Bear. I work out five, six days a week normally. It's 10 minute workouts or it's an hour workout. I do a mix of all kinds of things. Um, And I don't work out to get guns on the arms. I don't work out for six pack abs. I work out so that I can care for the people that God gives me and so that Mm -hmm. when I'm 90 and 95, I can walk up the steps alone and I don't have to have somebody help me if you know what I'm saying. In other words, I train for the sake of You can walk down the steps without falling. And walk down without as, falling. As we see, as we know yeah. someone who does. <laughs> yeah, well, and people, you know, people might joke around about about that, but you're right on that in, in that, you know, we can preserve our health and have a good quality of life for a long period of time. Amen. Now, all and we that, don't be a burden to other people. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know? Right. Yeah. And that goes along with probably my number one mantra and, and or, or mindset is be better prepared, help people be better prepared so that you can care for those that God has entrusted to your life, mm-hmm. all right? And that's what drives me is I want to be there for you, my friend, for 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 um, my buddy in, uh, in, in Florida, Texas, Nebraska, for my family in wherever they are in this country, for my future grandchildren that I don't even know. I have seven grandchildren. You got, I want to be there you for- got generations beyond. That's that it. the way you live is an example to those that follow That's it. you. Yeah. So for those that God entrusts to your life, as you just said, generations to, that, that are coming, 
they stand on our shoulders. Mm -hmm. Every generation stands on the generation mm -hmm. before them. Mm -hmm. And we want to give them good shoulders to stand on, body, mind, and soul. Mm -hmm. So be better prepared, body, mind, soul, so that those that God entrust to your care, you can make yourself a great gift to them. Isn't it right there in the Boy Scout code about being prepared? A Boy Scout is always it is. Yeah. prepared. Yeah. yeah, it's it is. Be, you know, be you know what I love. Prepared. You know what I love is when I when, when wherever I'm going, I'm going to go golf with Cindy. We're walking to the beach. We're going to a football game. Going to the grocery, wherever we're going. Hey, Cindy, do you have a cough drop? Yeah, right here. <laughs> or, <laughs> Cindy, do you? Uh, oh, I got a cut. Oh, I got a bandaid right here. Or, you know, I'm going to yeah. go receive communion. She pulls out the 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 germ, the germ <laughs> cleanser, so I don't get anyone else sick. You know, she's prepared, man. She's yeah, prepared. That's it. We, we, we're you know I'm, we're, we're we're driving in the golf bar, cart. Suddenly, here comes a, a, a ham and cheese sandwich out of the, her little this little bag that she carries. It's a it's a small, really small little backpack. It has everything. But there is something too that that we want to be pre that we we need to be prepared. Okay, I got another I got another one for you. Okay. One of my chapters in the book Twelve Rules for Manliness: Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? is be a man of your word. Hmm. What, what would you say about that? You know, Thomas More talked a lot about that, that mm. you're left with your word. You know, when you die, it's, it's how you've lived. It's what you've said. It's what you've been counted on for. It's what, you, what people could rely on. There's so much to that character aspect, okay? And, and that is a key part of our character for a man of our word. That people, when you say it, they know you will do it. Very much like I think of the Roman soldier who goes to our Lord Jesus and says, I have a servant who's sick. Jesus says, take me to him. And he says, no, all you need to do is give the word. Mm. And I know it will be done mm -hmm. because he knows that Jesus is a man of his word and that miracles wow. happen at the word wow. of Jesus. Yeah. So there is something very important, not just because it's a nice little nuanced sort of you know, uh, metaphorical or whatever you want to call it, sort of attitude or catchphrase, be a man of your word. The word became flesh. The word was spoken into the darkness and the universe was formed. The word is spoken and we exist. I mean, when God speaks, the word becomes flesh even, God himself. Our word matters. And when we fail in that, thanks be to God, we can go hear the words of the priest in confession, I absolve you of your sins. And then we get back up, we get back on the battlefield, and we get back to trying to keep our word. But the word has much more to do, I think, than with just what I want people to think of me. It has to do with the word, again, that God spoke into, into nothingness and created amazingness. And so the word that we speak when people know they can count on it, that's speaking something powerful yeah, when and people can, into yes. their lives. Yeah, when people know that when you give your word, they can count on you. Yes. I had a guy tell me once 20 years ago, whenever he would introduce me to people, he would say, he, and he never lies. I thought that was really an interesting statement. Wow. And he would always say that about me. And, you know, one of the things you can do by, one of the things, a uh, way a man lies is by not speaking what needs to be said. Hmm to the person that it needs to be said to, at the moment it needs to be said. That's yeah. an acquiescence, that's a lie. I agree. That's accepting something that, you know, like just for example, golfing, in a, I was golfing in a tournament the other day, came in last place, hadn't golfed in six months. <laughs> I won an award though, I won the tr a, a, a red key that gives me access to the ladies tee whenever I want to hit from the ladies tee box. But, but, uh, but the guy with me was kept using Christ's name in vain. And so finally, you know, but, but every time he did, every time he did, I just said, the only name by which men can be saved. Mm. It would have been a lie for me not to say something, right? We're talking with right. Doug Barry. we got to get right back to, with him. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're going to get back with Doug Barry. Uh, uh, don't go away. Be right back. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com.
Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Baron Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We got Doug Berry in the house. Man, I, I I could have this guy on every show. I could have Doug Berry on every show. We love, love uh, just love being with him. Um, okay, so I got a question for you. Yeah. Um, brotherhood. Hmm. What, a, a real cowboy. Hmm. The chapter title says, Build Brotherhood, Don't Be a Lone Wolf. Mm-hmm. What, what yeah. are your thoughts to the men out there about that? You know, in, in any battle you're going to have to sleep sooner or later. All right. Mm. You need, you need a battle buddy to take that shift while you're sleeping and then Mm. you do it for him. Mm. You know, you're going to, you're going to be caught up in conflict and battle of some sort. You need camaraderie. You need brotherhood. You need a battle buddy, even the military, you know, they'll give a battle buddy to someone, you know, a very good friend of mine. He's one of my battle buddies of over 35 years. We've been friends and, and he spent 32 years in the Navy, EOD, he's an EOD tech, Explosive Ordnance Disposal, he's a Master Chief, he's 10th degree black belt, the guy, you know, he'd, he'd connect with us very well, Bear, you gotta get him on sometime. He doesn't really do much Catholic speaking, but he would, he would do it now that he's oh, retired. Oh, connect me, we'll do it. Yeah, this guy's great, and a very deep philosophical mind, good Catholic man. Anyway, point is, he would tell me that when he was going through dive school, they'd give you a swim buddy. And the swim buddy is to help you check your gear. They go with you to make sure you don't drown. Okay, so battle buddy, swim buddy, somebody who's there to watch out for you. They watch your back. They got your six, whatever term you want to use. When you sleep, they're awake and vice versa, literally or figuratively, depending upon the circumstances. You know, and that's something like I think about like you and me, for example, we don't communicate a lot with each other. But when you got a hold of me, he texted me or emailed me and said, hey, you want to be on the show? I'm like, yeah. I mean, I don't always see the email or text right away. I, I, I get it. I, I kind of stay it. off grid we're on sometimes. The, we're on the new evangel. Anyone who's in the new evangelization is <laughs> behind the oh, curve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty inundated with a lot of stuff yeah. going on. But when I when I got a hold of it, I was like, absolutely, man. And then we pick up like we left off mm-hmm. whenever the last time was we talked. That kind of friendship and brotherhood is the type of friendship brotherhood I like. You know, some people call it low maintenance. Okay. Yeah, I can. They're buddies that I don't have to talk mm-hmm. to for like three yeah. years. And then we, we talk and it's just back to where we were. That kind of friendship, when you have that, you know wherever you are at a dark time of your life, you can send an email, you can call, you can text. Your friend is going to be there. Your buddy, your, 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 your battle buddy in that foxhole is going to be there with a prayer, an encouraging word. Like I got guys around this country, and I'm sure you know this. If you really needed something from me, I'd come out to Hawaii if I had to. Certain people, and I yeah. know you'd come here. I mean, when you've got buddies like that, that you know would 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 drop things to come to you if you mm. needed that kind of mm. help right away. That is a phenomenal well, well, way to live. Here's an example. It's amazing. Of Doug, here's Wonderful. an example I use about you all the time. Um, yeah, when I'm talking about the, the the brotherhood thing is, I remember when we went into a restaurant, and you and I both went for the alpha chair. I right, do. Yeah, I because, because we both know we want to be in a place where we know we have spatial awareness of what's going around us. Right. But and normally, if I'm not sitting in that chair, I'm very uncomfortable. But when you and I both went for it, we kind of looked at each other because we didn't. It was an unspoken thing that yeah. you know we both went for the same place. We we sat facing each other, and so what happened is you've got my back now. I don't have to worry about spatial awareness behind yeah. me because Doug Barry's there, 
and vice versa for you too. It no, doesn't matter which of I us gets the same it. about you. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't matter who's got the alpha because we're looking at the we're looking out for the other person. Uh, that's the essence of that kind of relationship. Like when I a, a, bro, a brotherhood come up come up and say, okay, look, we're gonna go, we're gonna go have a talk, we're gonna go pray, we're gonna go. We're going to go shoot around a golf or we're going to work out or something where we're going to talk story because I know something's going on in your life. What is it? Yeah. You know, and like I, I love you. Know, have you met Father Bryce Lundgren yet? I have not. No. Oh, you got to get to know him. So he's the Catholic cowboy priest. Okay. And I hooked him up with Sophia. His new book is right here, actually. The Catholic cowboy way. He got his book done before I did. And I had a year head start. <laughs> but um, but he was talking about if he and uh his buddy Zeke were out riding in Wyoming, and he actually has a working ranch. This mm. cool, cool priest, really loves nice. Jesus. JP2 type priest. But he, uh, he said, if Zeke and I were out riding out on the range, and I said, hey, Zeke, you know what I was thinking about is you and I, we just need to learn to be more vulnerable and open with each other. He said he would kick his, he would be over the next mountain before he, could, before he would even know what hit him. But if I said, hey, Zeke, you know what, man, you and I need to get more gritty and real with each other. That's what we need. We need the battle buddy that we can, look, I'm really having a problem with my teenage child or I'm having a challenge with this area of my life. I made a bad, some bad decisions. And you need someone like that, mm -hmm. you know, who's got your back. Brotherhood. Yeah. The lone wolves yeah. die. You know, I had used to have a cabin up in Montana. And when I first, it wasn't a cabin, it was a piece of raw land. And when I first went on that raw land and I was going to put in a little road and build my cabin, I saw a, a, a wolf, a lone wolf. He had those bright, scary looking eyes. And months later, I, I, I bumped into a guy who was a professor at the University of M Missoula, Montana at Missoula. He was a tracker. You know, they put those collars on these animals, the predators. Mm -hmm. He was tracking them. He said, by the way, you built your cabin right on a grizzly corridor, so not a good oh. idea. But I asked him about this wolf and he goes, yeah, I know that wolf. He said, that's a lone wolf. He, he, I said, he looked really angry. He looked like, this isn't your land, Bear, it's my land. But he looked kind of gaunt. He didn't look good. And he goes, yeah, that was a former alpha male that got forced out of the pack, and he has to hunt alone now. Mm. So men need to move, run in packs. I mean, Jesus had his pack. Yeah. We, need, we need one or two good friends, and then we need that company of men. So you yeah. go a little, little bit deeper with that for us. Well, the fact that, that our Lord chose, he chose the 12, he sent them out in twos. You know, mm, the disciples right, were right, sent right, out right, in right. twos, different places in Scripture, and and you know, so they would have each other's back, and they could encourage one another, and they could work together as a team, you know. And and our Lord is is pretty pretty good at setting the stage for us, for the rest of of, of mankind's existence, to realize that there's a lot of wisdom in that whole concept of teamwork, of camaraderie, of brotherhood, and and I agree with you on that. Especially, um, you know, they're, they're saying that when a wolf is alone, he can be dangerous. But w when he's with a pack, he's unstoppable. Mm. You know, because that. Wow. Pack that's, is why did I cons... interview you before I read my book? I would have just stolen everything you said. I could read my. <laughs> yeah, that pack is is hard to stop. So it, there's something incredibly important about looking at the fact that God Himself structures community. He structures mm. men to lead the community, and he structures men to bond together to form the leading of these communities. Now, this is not in any way negating a woman's influence. In fact, women's influence, I, I really want to emphasize this for the ladies listening and for us men in general. There's nothing, no one of anything, any kind, anywhere on the planet that affects man the way a woman does, okay. for good or okay. bad. Okay, I want to talk about that right now. Let, let's move into yeah. that. The next chapter, how a man treats a woman defines him. Mm. How a man's relationship with women, talk, go for it. You got, you got four more minutes, Doug, so just take, take that okay. away. You know, you, you, I think about Adam and all these different animals are being brought to Adam and he's naming all the animals. And then when Eve is brought to Adam, he says, he, everything changes. And he even says, finally, so after all of this creation yeah. that has been brought yeah. to him, finally, this one is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. This one is different. Mm. This one affects him differently. Now, I th I think, and I've never seen anything with the church fathers, so I'm not I'm not going theological on this. But I think that the enemy, the devil, knew that he couldn't get to Adam very well through any other means until he saw the effect that Eve had on Adam. Mm. And if he's going to tear down Adam, he he affects Eve in a way. And Eve turns to Adam and says what she says: "Hey, you want a bite of an apple?" And Adam's response: "Okay." And we've yeah. just been saying that ever since, right? <laughs> But what I'm getting, you know what at, I bet I got all the early, the commentaries back. I bet I'll find that in there someday, so, somewhere, someday, <laughs> right? That's perfect. But, 
But just think for a moment, the enemy is constantly watching us, okay? Constant reconnaissance, the devil is, is going after us, paying attention to the way we are affected by things, knowing where to attack us. I never get attempted, in, I, I never get tempted to get drunk, Bear. I never do. Yeah, and neither. the reason is because I've never gotten myself in a situation where I show a propensity to drink excessively. Yeah. I don't go to bars, I don't hang out in those areas. So the devil's looking at me going, well, we're not going to get him on that one because he doesn't go near that stuff. Okay. Avoid the, the near occasion of sin. That's exactly it. But the yeah. other areas of my life where I will put my foot into this water or that water that could be dangerous, those are the areas the demons will pay attention to. So I'm, I just believe that the demons know that women affect men like nothing else. Toughest guy in the world. I've been in the weight room working out, training for competition 20 years ago back on my powerlifting days. Tough guy comes up, oh yeah, this, that, the other thing. Then he breaks away for a minute to get a phone call and you hear him over there going, Yes, sweetheart. Okay, no, okay, whatever okay. you want. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. we got it. We got it. We got to end this, dude. We got to end this. But no, you're right on the money, dude. <laughs> I have a friend of mine, Gerard Middleton. You met him. He was went out and surfed with you, and we're on the pier, and we just had a big surf session, big waves. There was a shark sighting and all this manly stuff, and and he's talking, and then the phone rings. Oh hi. <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah, it, yeah. Man. So 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 we need to, as men, uh, treasure women, cherish women, protect women. And, they uh, are, they are a treasure. They yeah, are. Yeah. They're a beautiful gift. God made them so amazing. Um, the Intuitive Blessed Mother, of course, wise. they are modeled after the Blessed Mother. We need to elevate. We need to have a deep relationship with the Blessed Mother, and that will help teach us not to be barbarians, but to be true gentlemen to care for, protect, and defend all the ladies that God brings into our lives. Well, you know, you're one of those guys that's so hard to interview. You know, I ask you a question, you just say yes or no, and have nothing <laughs> to say. <laughs> no, but it's been great having Doug Berry on our show. Where can people find you, Doug? BRCoalition.com or Doug Berry YouTube or Doug Berry Facebook. You didn't mind me. That was cool going through that, going through those list of chapters. I just wish I had done it before I wrote the book. <laughs> but okay the book is called my, my book is 12 rules for manliness where have all the cowboys gone but we strongly urge you go and be go and subscribe to uh uh doug berry's newsletter and get become part of that uh that ohana over there. thanks doug for joining us thanks bear until next week may the breath of the holy spirit aloha you aloha Thanks for listening to the Bear Wilding Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wilding Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.